talked about styling. We've learned to put our rollers in, our pin curls in. And now we've got to decide how we put everything together to come up with a style. We see a style here and we've just got to decide what do we do to make the hair do this style. We have at our disposal at this point rollers, pin curls, and finger waves. Could we use a combination of all of them with this hairstyle? We could, yes. We see our finger waves readily there. We could use pin curls or rollers to get the curl. I like books like this, but I'm not overly fond of them because we need to learn um, how to place a roller, what size roller, and all that to get an effect we want. We need to learn to do our pin curls and get the effect we want, where to put finger waves. But this book actually gives a diagram of hair, how the hair was cut and set. And we're not using rollers in this particular style. They just showed using pin curls. Later on, you might want to take a closer look because I'm going to ask you all to show me a picture of a style and then I want to see your set for it as we get our skills up a little bit. And what we're going to go over today is some comb out techniques with this. This style would just be brushed out and that's all we'd have to do to it. Some of them require back combing or back brushing. And uh, we did the updo the other day with a little bit of back brushing, but I want to show you how to back comb today. The main thing in combing out our hair is to make sure we have brushed it thoroughly so that it doesn't have knots or tangles in it. Don't be scared once you've set a head of hair to roll it. Have faith in your set, or to brush it, excuse me. Have faith in your set. Brushing is not going to take your set out if it's good and dry and it has cooled from the dryer. One way we relax our sets a lot is we get impatient. We take it out from under the dryer, take it down real quickly, and brush it while it's wet, and that does relax curl. But once you take the rollers out and it dries thoroughly, that set's not going anywhere. Have confidence. All right, to back comb, where we want to get to back comb is we want to get our parts right in the middle of the little section we back comb. And back comb is meant to put a cushion down at the scalp to give more volume or lift, a more formal look. We want to lock our left arm because we don't want to be doing any of this. This is why you hear some people say, she just about pull my brains out back combing. It's because they hang in here loose and they go to teasing and they're all over the place. Just hold this firmly, not enough to hurt them, and start and just comb the hair down the strand. And you notice I'm using the fine teeth of the comb. And you can see she's got a mat there. Back combing or teasing done properly, I should be able to take this brush and just brush it right out, and I can. But if I begin to jerk it around and get it all tangled up with each other, I'm not going to be able to. But all I'm doing is sliding the hair down to the base. You may back comb or tease all the way to the ends or you may just want to get some down at that base and stop. This is really good with updos and back combing is better for somebody that wants to keep their style in there for a few days than back brushing. And I will show you back brushing again. But um, this will really make it stay. I'm not going to take the time to do the whole thing, but I'm going to show you how to comb over it. I like to use wire, and it will come out smooth. And all we have to do is just lightly brush over it. We don't want to get in here and start pulling it, because that's going to pull all of our cushion out. Just comb over it, and all of our teasing will be hid and we will have quite a lift in the front. And like I said, if done pr properly, it will brush right out, and I am gonna brush it out for you. But I want you to see what a lift it will give and how smooth we can make it. 
and I know y'all saw the other day with the back brushing that it would go over smooth but I want to show you that this will go over you know will smooth over too and sometime you may want to take your comb and you notice this has got the larger teeth you may take it and smooth over if you feel like the metal teeth are not getting it smooth enough and after we get it smoothed over we still have control over some lift with our teeth if we've got a particular part we want to lift a little more we will take this comb and hold it in our hand in front of it and lift it up and just continue to lift if we get it to the height that our client may want it and then we just spray it all right let's see if it will brush out now like it should and we'll do a little back brushing and that should not be painful to her at all as it comes out now we really thought we'd have to brush for a while didn't we to get all of that out all you do is pull it right back up the strand. All we did was took it down the strand. We're going to pull it right back up the strand. Now, let's do our br back brushing and see if you can tell the difference in what it looks like and what the back combing looks like. Just pick up a little section. And the same rules apply. I will usually get a little bit thicker strand with the brush because I've got so many bristles here as opposed to the comb. In the same way, just brush it down. But as you can see, it doesn't give as tight of a cushion there. And again, it will brush right back out. You brush it up the strand just like you brushed it down the strand. All right. I want to show you if you're doing an updo, how to lock your pins. And I know I showed you all this the other day, but I want to make sure you know how it goes. See if I can turn her around a little bit. Bobby pins look like they do for a reason. They have an end that sticks up, the bottom's flat, and then the top prong stands up. And that is so that they will lock. You get the hair where you want it, and Bobby pin. All right, Deborah. <laughs> You get the hair where you want it. And bobby pins are meant to be opened with your fingers or your fingernails, not your teeth. Open it. Put it in the hair. The next one's going to come. We're going to open it, and we're going to lock right over that bobby pin. And that's why that little tip is there, so we can go right over it and lock them together so they don't move and we continue going up we come in from the other side and we lock in with the next one and that's just how our pins go in hair pins are meant to add the smooth finish or just hold a small amount of hair in and they look differently. They are real thin. And they are meant to add finishing touches, not really hold a lot of weight. So we want to smooth our hair over as we put it into a twist. Then we're going to take our hair pins and we want to try to touch our bobby pins with them or lock our bobby pins with them. If we want this pin to go down, we're going to first put it in, go up a little bit with it, and then turn it so that it locks on our bobby pin and we'll hold our hair. The next one we do the same way. Go down if we're wanting it to go up and then reverse it so that it locks in. And it takes very little to hold the hair up there. You can also use your hair pins as to smooth with if you'd like to. And it holds it in place. 
And that's just some of the techniques we'll use in comb mounts. I told y'all the other day I wanted to show you something with a braid. And I'm going to take this doll. And this is just, you'll learn all kind of techniques as you learn to style. And you can try some things of your own. Watch TV and what you see. And spin off from it. It's like brainstorming. Once you see something, you want to do something else. Um, I had a student that won in state cosmetology contest, and she did something real neat with her updos. She had an updo in the back, and then she would take and knot this hair and left that in there as part of the design. Y'all can come around if you want to see. And then she'd do it again. I'm just showing you a few comb out techniques. But I thought this was really cute. You do like a French twist and then bring this around as a design. Leave it in and hide your ends. So that was real cute. But something I had told y'all I think I would show you with braids. And I just love this. The lanyards like the kids make for key rigs. Y'all know what I'm talking about with the... Um, what is it, plastic bands or whatever. You want to do your braid, and you can use either size you want to. If you get too small, it doesn't give the effect as well, but it makes a neat little thing there. You just get your um, braids going. And the main rule of it is just do not tighten it up, because if you do, you're not going to be able to pull it. You know, so I'm holding it with some tension, but not tight. And I know you're wondering how this is going to look like the lanyards look pushed together. Can you see? Come around here if you want to. You can do different things with the ends after you complete. But if you're going to work with young clients, they like different things. Different being the key word. A little off the beaten path that we usually use in the salon. I'm not going to go all the way to the end because I'm far enough to show you. But all you've got to do is hold one strand and push the other up. It is. It's very different because you'd have to attach the ends. When you get ready to take it down, and you can push it up tighter if you'd like to and make some type of design there. It doesn't matter as long as you hold one and push two. It doesn't matter a bit, and then it comes right back out. So as you go along, you're going to have to experiment with comb-out techniques. Learn your own style, what you want to do, and we'll, we'll show another one or two in the book using some things. Um, eventually, we're going to go into blow-dry styling when we go into 111. But it's really interesting to see the different ways. Here's another style, and we think of this as a blow-dry style, I'm sure. But in all actuality... They are putting rollers, and they're telling us if they're on base, one half base, or off base, so we can refer to them. Y'all remember what the on base does? It gives you greatest amount of volume. Half off base gives less volume. And um, off base gives the least volume, but it also gives the most movement because it can move around. But you really thought that could only be achieved with blow dry styling, didn't you? Then it shows you how to use your brush on styles if you want to use the blow dry styling. Even how to put waves in the hair that we were doing previously, like finger waves. So it's really interesting to see the different tools we can use and what they will do. As we get a little further along, also we're going to do the wrap method where we wrap the hair, have it all wet, and wrap it around the head. And oftentimes it's done and then a couple of rollers are hit, put here on top, and it gives the real smooth effect on hair. 
But here's another style. And there's the roller patterns that are used with it. So we can see how it's set and then how it's calmed out. All right. We have questions? All right.